So today we're going to be talking about band saws, scroll saws, coping saws, and I'm just going to show you what a jigsaw is. All of these saws have the same thing in common. They cut irregular cuts. Think of a jigsaw puzzle. That's where it stemmed from. They would use a tool like this called a coping saw. As you can see, it's got fine teeth and the blade itself is pretty thin. The thinner the blade, the more intricate the design you can cut out. So the blade itself here is a T-blade. It's called a T-blade. Let's see if I can get the focus right there. You can see that is a T spot, is a spoke right there that makes it a T-blade. blades you want to hold right here. So you're going to hold that in place so it doesn't turn. I'm then going to turn towards me. So as I'm turning towards me, that would be counterclockwise, loosening that bolt. And that, as you can see, is going to reduce the tension on the blade. Don't let that come undone. So it's still screwed in there. Don't let that come completely out. There's no need. So if I put pressure on this end, pushing in, the blade comes out and I can actually take both sides off. I can then slide one side in. This is the T part. I'm gonna slide that in. Uh, note that these little pieces come out sometimes, so be careful. Then to put it back in, you want your teeth pointing down so that it can cut. You're gonna slide it into one side and then I'm gonna hold or push tension on this end so that it can slide into the other side. Once it's in, I hold this so it doesn't rotate and I rotate clockwise to close it. So the blade itself, this teeth, is pointing to the floor. So you look at the teeth, they're pointing down so that when I'm Okay. it's going to cut on my pull, not the push, the pull stroke. So it's a coping saw, and this can cut irregular cuts. So begin with, when we get to a machine or even to the hand tool, we have to have a plan in place. We have to think about the cuts we wanna make, how to be efficient with our cuts, and what type are gonna be needed. So I gave you a few examples here. Whenever I need to cut something, I put an X in the axis to identify that it's waste. It's something I want to get rid of. Notice the space here. That's about an eighth of an inch. You don't want to cut on the line. You want to leave some space, maybe a sixteenth of the space, so that you can move away from it because you're the one in control and not cut into your actual project. If you're getting close to that line, stop, back it out, and adjust your blade so it goes away. I gave some note here. If I have an external curve that I need to cut, I'm gonna make what's called a tangent cut. And that's just starting from one edge and coming all the way off. That's to get rid of as much material as I can to save me time and effort. I can then do the same thing coming down this direction and then down across. So I'm looking at that curve and thinking, what's going to be the best cut to get rid of most of the material that I don't need to keep? So that would be the same concept right here. If I'm making an internal curve, I'm going to want to create relief cuts. So the relief cut is if I'm coming into the board, for me, I turn the machine off and then I back out. The reason I turn the machine off is because if I have, a, especially an intricate cut, if I go into that board, I don't. I, I, have, I, I know I won't be backing out the same way I went in. So that could twist and turn the blade. That becomes very important when we talk about machines such as the bandsaw. The bandsaw has a full blade and I'll show you the band of that blade. So if I have a lot of twisting or torquing on that blade, it can snap my blade. So I want my blade to last longer. So when I go into a relief cut, and if I have to back out, I'm going to stop the machine, let it come to a full stop, and then guide the board out as best as I can, avoiding twisting that blade. 
if my leaf cut is small and it is not and the blade doesn't fit all the way through it, that means I can just back it right out because the blade hasn't passed itself. In this case, this is a very thin blade, so I'd always have I could always just back it out nice and easy because it's the coping saw. I have a variety of different blades I can put on for the band saw. They can be extremely thin to really wide. So if it's a really wide blade or a wide blade that doesn't even enter the entire cut, then I can just back out because it's not going into the board. So those are relief cuts and tangent cuts. So we talk about the coping saw, and this is the hand version, and there's different varieties, but the same concept. You hold the piece that's near the handle so it doesn't rotate, twist it counterclockwise to loosen up that thread. Notice it's coming out, which reduces the tension, and then I push a little bit and it pops out the T bit. All right, and then to place it back in, I do the same thing. I push a little bit, find my alignment, it's in, pull this in place so it doesn't turn and rotate clockwise and that closes the coping saw. The big brother to the coping saw is the jigsaw. So it's a reciprocal jig, it's a, it's a reciprocal, uh, a jigsaw that goes up and down. All right, so same concept. It gives me movement to go around. The bits come in different sizes. There's different tight bits on this one, but it is the same concept as the coping saw. We're not gonna go over safety on this, I want to talk about its next brother or older sister, however you want to view it. Scroll saw. Scroll saw has the same type of blade as you can see. The blade is pointing to the ground, all those teeth. All right, it's got a throat plate. This is the table. This is the guard as well as this. So you can't get your hands in the line of cut. The line of cut is located right here. This knob right here is what is used to adjust the height of the guard. So if I loosen this by turning it counterclockwise away from me, then I can move this up and down. And then I can lock it in place by turning it clockwise. This blows out air. We have lights on this one as well. All right, the table is able to rotate by this knob right here, and it can go onto different angles. So you wanna make sure you check your table before use. Over here, you have the on off button. This is the speed, just the speeds. And right now it's set so that it actually is controlled by a foot pedal. So I'll turn it on. The red light indicates on power. I press the foot pedal down. I'm gonna move the wood out of the way. and it goes up and down. It is extremely similar to a um, sewing machine. To adjust the speed, this knob right here moves it faster. If I turn to the H, if I go back to the L, that means low speed, and it goes smaller. If this is my wood, I want the guard to be just above so that I can slide it through. I usually put it about a 16th inch above and then I lock it in place. So as you can see, that space is minimal, especially for the metal, so that it holds it down. So you want to make sure you start the blade first before you feed your stock. So if I feed the wood in while the blade is going, it's gonna start cutting. If I have the wood there and then start the machine, it's going to jam that blade. So you wanna make sure the wood's not in, you start it and then you feed. Before I enter the board, I wanna make sure the blade starts and then I can feed the machine. There are some checks to this. You want to make sure your table's clear, your floor is clear, there's no one within three feet of you, your air and everything's clear, your blade's okay. Whenever I have a blade, 
I need to make sure that there's no cracks, there's no checks, and it's not clogged. So my blade looks good. This also needs to be the right tension, so it's not loose, it's um, taut, just like the coping saw, where it's nice and taut, it's cool. you can even hear it, you can play a tune with it. That is the proper tension. If this was loose, it doesn't have the same noise, and it's too, there's too much movement to the blade. So we wanna make sure our scroll saw blade, our coping saw blade, and even our bandsaw blade has the right tension. We wanna make sure that it's tracking well, so that when I, put, when I turn it on, it's not moving. There's no movement to it, it's just going up and down, like the sewing machine. So to cut the wood, I start the machine, and then I just... up and down, adjust your um, guard, but also adjust the speed. The bouncing up and down really has to do with the speed. Each piece of wood has a sweet spot when it comes to cutting, especially on the scroll saw, for your speed. So if I, sometimes if I make it uh, go a little faster, the jumping will stop. Sometimes I have to reduce the speed to reduce the, the jumping. So a lot of that takes practice and Time. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to cut the so as you know, my hands stay away from the line of cut. My hands are to the side. I always want to keep my hands a thumb length away from the blade. Um, I have the control on here and I made a curve uh, cut. So I want to gradually guide my way out, reducing the tension on that bit. So there's my curved type cut. It's nice um, and delicate. So now we're going to talk about the bandsaw. So that's the scroll saw. I'm going to turn the machine off, make sure everything's cleaned up, and then I can move away. The next machine we're going to talk about is the bandsaw. The reason it's called the bandsaw is because it's got a continuous band all the way around. Whenever you check in the machine, make sure it's unplugged. So in our case, we'll plug this here. You have a band right here. There is a lot of wood on it. See the blade? It's got some wood on it, so it's been in use. To you clean. use a wire brush, and all you'd have to do is come in and stripe it. Um, otherwise, we'll be changing that blade within time. So, you want to check its tension. So, that is how taut this is. All right, you want to see it's tracking. So, when I turn it by hand, it's going straight. There's no wobbles. And then, so we did, uh, you also want to check to see if the blade's got any checks or chips in it. So any of the teeth are chipped or if there's any cracks in the actual blade itself. It's tension. There are two knobs in the back, the two big ones, and there's one over here. This would make the tension of the blade. So what that does is that raises this up or down. And then the other knob adjusts the tracking which takes this wheel and turns it forward or backwards so that the blade doesn't slip off. I want to make sure, once again, your area is clear. There's no one within a three foot tennis vicinity. And on this machine, you don't want anyone on the right hand side, on this side, because if the blade does snap, that's a dangerous area. There is no kickback on here, um, but you have to watch where your fingers are placed. The on off on this machine is located over here. Um, when you're using it, make sure you're in a balanced stance, close toe shoes, nothing dangling, sleeves rolled up, nothing on your wrist, nothing on your hands, Jake, you got on. You're mentally ready to use the machine because your entire attitude is to be towards safety and the use of this. This also has a air blower. The first thing we have to do, besides we already did our cuts, right? We already did the same thing like the scroll saw. We planned our cuts prior to getting to the machine. We know what we're going to be doing. You want to set the height of your blade. So the, the guard right here is this 
piece of metal that comes all the way down here. So to turn that, to raise and lower that, there is a knob right here that you turn. So turning towards your right, so that would be clockwise if I'm looking directly at it. That allows me to raise and lower it. And sometimes you need to use both hands to raise and lower it. And you want it to be an eighth of an inch above your stuff, no greater. The reason for that is I don't want my finger to get hit. My, there's a lot of stuff in the place to prevent my finger from getting hit if I'm not in the line, if, if, if by chance I'm in the line of cut because I wasn't paying attention. Once again, the line of cut is directly in front of that blade. So this entire path right here, that's the line of cut. My hands are to the right and to the left of it. If there's anything that's pushed beyond so for example, if there's a small piece I have to push or get, I can reach around to the side, never behind the blade. If it gets to the point where something is behind that blade, I pick a piece of scrap, there is a scrap bin to the right of this machine, and I can push that out of the way. Or I can just turn the machine off, wait for it to come to a close spot, and then I can remove anything that's on my table. The table is just like the scroll saw. It can be angled by a knob underneath, um, so it can be rotated. There is a T-groove in here, so I can use a uh, fence or I can use a miter gauge, which I don't have around here at the time being. So there's also a throat plate, and we are gonna get going. So to do a cut, make sure your gut was on. All right, we're gonna send this through, turn it on, let it come to full speed. <laughs> I'm going to make my hand hit cut. So a hand hit cut, once again, it's just going straight across. All right, I left some space between that so I can sand it. And notice I moved the wood. The, wood, the blade didn't move. I moved the wood and that created the cut. So I'm slowly moving the board and slowly turning it. If I force my board into it, it can ruin the blade. It can also ruin my project. If I um, turn it too hard, you're gonna hear a loud screeching noise and that's the machine screaming at you, please stop. So you wanna make sure you're gradually moving the board letting the blade do its work. If it's getting too close to your project, if you just held your project down and didn't move it and turn it off, you would be fine. The machine, the blade isn't gonna go into your project unless you push it into the project. So the next cut, so I wanna remove that material. I can do it now because the blade's off, throw it in the scrap bin, um, or I can, when it's on, take a large scrap piece of wood that can push it out of the way, even something like this, so that my hand is never near that blade. For the internal cut, I'm gonna make relief cuts, and that's gonna make it so that while I'm trying to create this curve, the pieces are gonna fall off, allowing me to have more movement for the blade. It's also gonna relieve the tension of the blade as I go through. <laughs> I just held it there. It's not going into my project. Backing out so you can see what the relief cut looks like. All right. Come again. So I'm thinking about where my cuts are being placed because I'm thinking about can I make that slight turn? Is my blade too thick to get there? So if I had, I'm saying it's about here. So if I put one more here, it might be good to get to that point. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut to this point so you can see what I mean.
able to move my wood away because it wasn't in between two pieces. There was no tension, there was no friction against that board, that piece of that blade. As you can see, I gradually did my curve. I didn't force it, I slowly went through it. Um, there is no machine burn, so I didn't go too slow. I just let the machine do its work, gradually turn my wood to get the two pieces off. Notice the two pieces cut off quite nice and easily. All right, it allowed, once one piece was cut, it removed itself from the wood and then allowed me to get or make the more movement or more turn in the board to get to the next piece. Sometimes we have to cut something that's cylindrical or round at the bottom, so like a dowel. So with that, just like the drill press, we use what's called a V block. So this is just a V cut out into a piece of wood so that the, the, wood, the dowel itself just sits in there without movement so I can fold it. So I will adjust my guard. The V block is not gonna get cut. It's just to be there to help my be a guide. Set this out to there so that you can see it's about an eighth of an inch off. If you, don't, if you need help with your eighth of an inch, grab a ruler. I just know it by eye because I do it so much. So I'm going to cut the broken part. So my hand is three inches away. I'm folding both pieces down firmly against the table. I never cut any wood with a scroll saw or a bandsaw or any other machine with a, with a piece of material off the table. It needs to be nice against the table. <laughs> Whenever you use the machine, you make sure it comes to full stop before you walk away. The on off is here. You're not going to walk away from the machine unless it comes to a complete full stop. So that's the cut. That's the round stop, the block, hand relief cuts, um, stance, your guards, tension traction. I believe that's it. So that is the bandsaw. When I am done, before I leave the machine, I also lower the guard all the way to the table for super safety. So just in case, as we know, this side is the danger zone uh, if the blade breaks. If it does break, it's going to make a big bang sound. Just turn the machine off. Um, come get a teacher. Don't touch the machine. Don't open anything. Make sure that it's clear. You don't want to open this up until it comes to a complete stop and let the teacher do that. We'll then go over how to change the blade and get it adjusted again. Also, you want to make sure it's clean when you're done. So after you, before you use, you make sure your area is spotless. There's nothing there, nothing on the floor, three feet space. When you leave, when you're done, nothing's on the table, nothing's on the floor. All your scrap wood goes in the scrap bin. Leave it the way it came. Make sure that there's no dust clogged anywhere. Clean it up so we can keep it nice.